Welcome back, everybody, to yet another very special From Screen to Shelf review. I am your boy, Chase, a.k.a. Paul Atreides. I don't know. A.k.a. Paul Atreides. I just got done seeing Dune, so fuck it. Why not? Today, what we're going to be talking to you about is Fear and Desire, presented miraculously from the Kino Lorber studios i don't know why i had to think of that literally the packaging should have said it all uh it threw me off because it says the library of congress on the side which we will dive into here in just a second so <clears throat> there is some really really cool stuff on this fear and desire uh presentation that's here it's kind of monumental and kind of historic with what we've got here almost on the lines of metropolis um, if you remember, Kino Lorber has quite a bit of history of finding some like relatively lost, unknown footage and stuff like that and completing films. And this is no exception. <clears throat> so without further ado, let me just, it, it summarizes it so freaking well on the back with everything I'm going to go and dive into on this. So I'm just going to read it verbatim off the back on what's on the back of the slip cover right here. Uh, let me go ahead and give some money shots of that. There's the... Library, Kino. Perfect, perfect. Brand new HDR Dolby Vision Masters of both cuts. 4K restorations from the 35mm camera negative and fine grain. Fear and Desire is the ambitious first feature film by legendary filmmaker Stanley Kubrick. In his existential drama, which has the feeling of a waking dream rather than a conventional war film, four soldiers return to their senses after crash landing in a forest behind enemy lines. Blindly navigating their way back to their unit, they attack an isolated cabin occupied by enemy soldiers, then apprehend a peasant woman who was tormented by the der deranged young soldier assigned to guard her. So, this is where things get really interesting. I'm just going to stop reading the summary right there because that's pretty much all you need to know about the movie. We're going to come back and talk a little bit more about the movie because this is the most important and very special part. Upon this film's release, Kubrick was stung by negative audience reactions and immediately decided to tone down the philosophical aspects of the film. These edits made the film less of a metaphysical experience and more of a conventional war film. For decades, the 62-minute version was all that existed of Fear and Desire, until the Library of Congress came into possession of a 35mm element of the original 70-minute cut, which has not been seen since its interrupted theatrical run in 1953. Now, courtesy of this, we can finally see Fear and Desire as it was first released. Wow. Monumental, yet again. This is the first time, and it makes me so excited as a movie buff. And it's one of the biggest reasons I have the shelves right here. It goes further this way, and then I have all the shelves over there. Why I stack so many movies because of complete edition, special features, stories like this. This is what got me excited. This was a blind buy. I did never watch Fear and Desire before this, um, but I'm also a Stanley Kubrick fanatic. As you can tell, 2001 A Space Odyssey is one of my absolute favorite movies. It's my first or second favorite movie of all time, just depending on if I'm more in the mood for that or Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, cool little tidbit if you didn't know that those were my two favorite movies. So let's dive into the movie and then the presentation itself. The movie, unfortunately, I wasn't the big fan of. I'm not the biggest fan of war movies, but that doesn't mean that I don't watch them. I'm a good cinema enjoyer, so I will watch anything, anything, as long as I feel like I'm going to go in for a ride. As I, I don't take as many chances on like three, two and a half hour long movies, just because sometimes I segment those up, I have to put them into parts, and it just doesn't play out the way that I really, really want it to, right? So... It, even though it goes into detail about how the original cut, I only watched what they refer to here as the premiere cut, the 70 minute version. I did not watch the 60 plus minute cut or 62 minute cut. Um, but I can still say that it kind of felt, it, it felt a little existential and stuff like that. A little, as they call it, metaphysical. Um, it had some different things going for it. You had a little bit of that Kubrick charm in there. I could kind of tell I was watching a Kubrick film, but at the end of the day, it just felt like another war movie. And I hate to kind of say that because I was kind of anticipating a little bit more with it being Stanley Kubrick, but also my levels were very, very lowered or my expectations were highly lowered. 
um, with it being his first direct uh, feature length film in this category. So in that world or that realm, I would say take that how you want. You might absolutely love this movie. I doubt it's going to be your new favorite Kubrick, but what makes this package worth it? I have about four things that make this package worth it. The restoration. My God, this restoration is great. There's just some points and it's, it's during those Kubrick moments. Like there's this point where uh, this guy is like really close to the camera about that close and it just focuses on him. a little bit of the mud, a little bit of the grime. You can see very clear pores on faces, um, the, the shading that's pr uh, provided from the black and white tones, everything like that is absolutely incredible. It really got me going in all the right areas. I had a great time just absolutely just soaking in how good it looked. And there weren't that many moments, if really any at all, unless I'm going to be nitpicky, that really just absolutely just sunk down. It looked phenomenal. Uh, one of the better, I, I wouldn't say one of the better, uh, I really do and am a believer that black and white is not it, it's getting a lot more love but i have yet to find somebody that disagrees with me that will be that will foray into the black and white category of movies some the universal monsters uh, classic collections volume one and two are some of the best on the entire platform bar none dracula looks incredible one of the ones that looked the least impressive on there invisible man still looked incredible frankenstein incredible um i'm trying to think of some other ones paths of glory incredible dr strange love incredible uh, there's just so many good near reference, if not reference quality movies out there that are in black and white. And this is no exception. This is getting added up there. Even though this isn't going to be a, a, a very average rewatch for me whenever I'm going through a Kubrick, a Kubrick kick or anything like that, I'm definitely going to be adding this on there. Um, it ranks probably at the bottom of my Kubrick list, but again, I, I, I just, I, I don't know. Um, like again, it might grow on me more, but I definitely like Killers, Killers Kiss. Those were much, much better and up my alley than this movie particularly was as a movie of five out of 10, um, which again is not a bad rating. You know, the, the transfer itself, nine and a half out of 10, but the movie itself, just because I give it a five means it's middle of the ground. It's okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. I found it perfectly okay right across the board. It's right down the middle. So now this is what makes it even more impressive. You don't only get that one movie. You get three more short films courtesy of Kino Lorber and courtesy from Stanley Kubrick, the man, the myth, the legend in question. So the other three that you get is you get Flying Padre, a 1951 short film by Stanley Kubrick. It runs, if I remember right, about nine minutes long. It's pretty okay. It, it had some charming moments. Again, you can see some of that Kubrick shine. It's kind of cool. Like this, I, I would call this the Stanley Kubrick evolution package, right? You can see a lot of what made him, what, what he became, that this was the springboard, that this was very experimental for him. He did a lot more, especially on as I go in on these short films, he did it a lot more like small you know, small scope stuff as most people tend to do in their early careers. And you can kind of tell how he evolves as time goes on. And that's no exception for the next one we're going to talk about with a day of the fight, another 1951 short film by Stanley Kubrick. And I do believe that these are fully in 4k as well. Um, I didn't double check before getting on here, but I did put, uh, turn on my playback info said 4k and it was running between 70 to 80 megabytes per second on some of these short films. So they looked great. Day of the Fight was a little bit near and dear. There was some really, really cool stuff in there. It's about following this boxer. Martial arts is a bit of a personal thing for me because I dibble and dabble in martial arts myself. So seeing anything martial arts related, especially when you're following an actual boxer and stuff like that, and just another day, an average Joe, a fighter's life and everything like that and getting ready for the big spar. So I find it really, really cool. This one was actually probably my favorite thing out of all four th films that are featured on this. It's just really cool and it's only about 12 minutes long but i found it really really awesome really really nice and very very interesting for sure and then the next one the seafarers uh that's another 1953 one or it's a 1953 one and it's his first color um film at that this one it, it was cool it was made for the seafarers international union if i remember right it's more of a little ad think of those little workplace ads where it's like do this, do that, join us, come do this, come do that. It's it's really just an advertisement to join the union. I had some cool things, some really cool shots. Um, there really isn't a lot of that Kubrick flair coming through that I've been mentioning a couple of times here and there, but it's still really, really awesome nonetheless with what we've gotten, right? Like this is just a really cool Kubrick experience package 
that I think everybody who is a Stanley Kubrick fan should really go out there, should really get. And then for the price, $30 for a piece of history, I don't think that's a bad price. I think mine might have been cheaper. I think like 26 and some change with the Amazon Pruitt or price guarantee. So <clears throat> yeah, definitely add this onto your um, list. Give it a shot. Um, Fear and Desire. And yeah, but courtesy of Kino Lorber and thank you Library of Congress for making this happen as well. And partnering with Kino Lorber. As always, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another very special episode of From Screen to Shelves Reviews. Stay tuned for more exciting content. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know how you feel about this. Let me know if you love Fear and Desire. Let me know if maybe you feel differently as a whole package. I give it probably right around a solid yeah, nine, yeah, nine and a half, really. It's really just a great Kubrick fan package. I can't say enough. Thank you so much again, everybody. Stay safe.